today comes from the Gospel of Mark, the 11th chapter, the 25th verse, and Jesus says this, Whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your sins. Welcome to another one of our Wednesday evening services in this season of Lent. It's an awkward time. I mean, we're in the time of COVID and, and things are still not normal. And yet we have the opportunity to come together in an online format through the season of Lent as we think about really important topics to our life. And our theme of connecting our faith to our life is so important because the story of our faith has the power to change the way that we see ourselves, others, and the world, but only only if it connects to what we do each and every day of how we live out our life. And so we have a bunch of sub-themes that we're working with as we take the story of our faith and make it very real. And so today our theme uh, is reconciliation. And that is so timely, it's so important, and it's so difficult. Because we live right now in a time and a culture where there is so much division. And I've said this before, but I mean it. I cannot tell you the number of families that I speak with who talk about their parents or an aunt or a grandparent or cousins or, or some part of their family that they don't talk to anymore. That they refuse to talk to anymore that there is such bad blood that they, that they don't interact with them. They don't phone call or text or anything. We're hurting. There's a lot of people who are hurting right now within their relationships. Reconciliation or bringing together that which has been broken is an essential aspect of our faith. It's, it's, it's so important to Jesus' ministry and it makes a difference in our life. And it's one thing for me to talk about it in general, but it's a whole nother thing for you to be able to experience it through the story of another. And so today I've invited Kara Gordon, one of our members here at Bethlehem, a preschool teacher, a great person to share her story 
on how she has experienced reconciliation in her life as it relates to the practice of our faith. And so now we hear Kara Gordon. All right, so welcome. I am with Kara Gordon, and I'm gonna ask you just to introduce yourself a little bit for the people who don't know you. My name is Kara Gordon. Uh, my husband Larry and I have been coming to Bethlehem for about five years now, and I am a preschool teacher for the St. Cloud School District. And how long have you been teaching preschool for? This is my fifth year as a licensed preschool teacher and my eighth year working with preschoolers in the St. Cloud Schools. Wow, there you go. Well, thanks for that work. That's, I just know I could never be a preschool teacher, so more power to all of you who yeah. do that. It takes a lot of patience. <laughs> so the theme, the sub-theme, I guess, for this week's uh, Lenten focus is on reconciliation. And it's a word that well, I don't think it's used very much, actually, uh, in, our, in our culture, in our society, really. Uh, so just when you hear that, well, what comes to your mind or how do you think about reconciliation in, in the context that we find ourselves in? When I think of reconciliation, I think of forgiveness. I think that's a, a very big part of the reconciliation process. And like with forgiveness, it's not just something where you're like, okay, I forgive you and it's done and we've moved past it. It's, it's something that you're choosing to do. You're choosing to reconcile with somebody over and over and over again. And you might have days where you're like, okay, I 80% forgive you today. <laughs> and then something happens where you're like back down to 20% and you're like, okay, we're going to have to start this whole thing over again. Um, so it's kind of an up and down process that you have to just keep working at. Mm, I like that. And you know, when I think about it, it, it's just we live in a world right now where there's so much division mm -hmm. and anger, hate <laughs> towards, towards people. Um, the healing, forgiveness, the process of reconciliation, like how you said that, it, it becomes such an important piece for um, society, but also it's, it's, corner, it's a cornerstone of what we are about as a church right. and, and what the story of our faith is about. So keep putting some flesh on this, I mean, it's one thing to talk about in general, kind of like what reconciliation is, how it's needed. How have you really experienced it though? And really that's what we're looking for. How have you as a person experienced this process? Mm -hmm. So my story with reconciliation starts when I was 15 years old. Um, and that was when I first started experiencing symptoms of mental illness. And, uh, you know, just kind of got worse and got worse as I went through my teenage years. Um, eventually I was diagnosed with PTSD, depression, and anxiety. And I went to my parents for the first time to talk to them about this when I was 16. And I said, you know, I think I'm mentally ill. Um, I showed them that I had been self-harming and they were just not in a place where they, they could accept that. Um, I was their firstborn child. They had, they had all these hopes and dreams for me and me being significantly mentally ill did not fit into their picture. <laughs> of how things were going to go. Uh, up until then, I had been an honor student, I had been involved in the church, I had invo been involved in all kinds of different activities, and then it just, everything got derailed. And so they just, they didn't want that for me. Um, but because they couldn't wrap their heads around that, they ended up saying some very hurtful things to me. Um, they told me it was just a phase and that I was doing it for attention. Um, and they told me that it wasn't possible for me to be mentally ill because it didn't run in our family, which mental illness is not always genetic. Um, and come to find out, it does actually run in both sides of my family. I just found out this weekend about two more people in my family who are currently being treated for mental, mental illness that I had no clue about. Oh. So it, it does run in my family, um, but it wasn't being talked about. So they had no idea. 
Um, and from there, it just, it got worse and worse. I wasn't getting the type of help I needed. And so I hit some pretty low bottoms. And in the back of my mind, it was always, you know, if they would have been there for me in the way that I needed, when I needed it, would this be different? And so it got to the point where when I was 18, I left home. And there was about a six month period of time where I had no contact with my parents. Um, and originally, I, I didn't think that that relationship would ever be repaired. I thought it was too far gone. Mm -hmm. um, I had no intention of ever going back to the point where I was homeless for a period of time because I didn't feel like I could count on my parents. And you just refused to go home? I just, I refused to go home even, because... Even though you had nowhere else to go at that point? No, no, I lived, I lived out of my car. I was, you know, s sleeping in a different place almost every night. Um, but at the time that felt safer to me. I, I didn't feel like I had that safety net. Um, so after about six months of that, I think that was when they finally started to understand um, how severe it was for me, how impaired my functioning was at that point. Um, I was, I was a senior in high school and working three jobs, but just barely getting by um, and barely functioning. And they finally got to the point where they were ready to help me. And it wasn't always exactly the help I wanted and needed, yeah. but they were finally putting in some effort for the first time. Um, you know, they helped me get into a psychiatrist and start start making this you know taking steps i needed to heal and we started being able to move forward and it was quite honestly years before that relationship did start to feel like it was repaired yeah. I, originally i didn't have high hopes and it's i not thought like, it was temporary well it's not like you flip a switch and everything is yep. you know went from bad to, okay, we're better now. Yeah. It takes, yeah. took you a long time. There was, I, I was very hurt by a lot of things that they had said and a lot of things that they hadn't said. And they still weren't, they were at a place where they wanted to help me, but maybe weren't always helping me in the best way. Yeah. You know, they were trying, but they were doing the best that they knew how. Yeah. But sometimes that still came out in, in them making some missteps. Yeah. And I think some of that comes from their experience is so different from my own experience. <laughs> and it's so hard when, when you have people with so different life experiences to understand each other. They just, they've never struggled with their mental health. And they just couldn't wrap their head around why things were so hard for me like it just they just didn't get it yeah. and so it took some tough conversations about what it actually is like for me mm. to walk in the world and what um how it feels and they don't they still don't quite understand it fully mm -hmm. but but they're trying to and I, that makes, I mean, that makes a lot of a difference because at first they weren't even sure. trying and now they're definitely trying to and, and we're still not quite at that, you know, like place where I would love us to be. Mm -hmm. There's still some days where they'll say something and it takes me <laughs> right back to all that teenage <laughs> angst and I am just furious with them again. Um, and I'm back down to like 10 or 20 percent and I have to think about okay where where are they coming from when they say something like that like I know that they love me I know that they're not they weren't trying to hurt me yeah. when they said that um, and just reminding myself 
that it's that wasn't the intent. Yeah. Well, that's a really good story. I mean, so my last question for you, Ashley, is this: so thinking about your experience with this, I mean, what would you want to tell somebody who maybe like yourself is in a place right now where they don't see much hope? Yeah. I mean, it's it's not twenty percent even. I mean, it's yeah. the relationship they feel is gone. Yeah. Um, and they're in that really, really bad place. Or, or even then, what would you want to tell somebody who uh, maybe is not in that place, but the opposite place where they're the ones who feel like, what happened to my kid? Mm -hmm. Or what happened to my family member? What happened to my friend? We used to go out all the time and talk, and now we hate it. I mean, yeah. is it possible to restore? Well, I mean, just, just talk a little bit maybe about that. Yeah, I think I think it's definitely possible in all situations because I never heard. I was completely certain that my parents were out of my life permanently. <laughs> I was very, very certain of that. Um, and I'm very grateful that they are now a part of my life. Um, you know, I don't know how I would have gotten to where I am today without them. Sure. Um, so, so, so think, hope is possible. Yes, definitely. I think a lot of part of it is listening and trying to understand where the other person is coming from. Um, and forgiveness is a huge part of it. Some of it is accepting that you're never going to completely understand their perspective. Um, but you can try. And I think there's something about the actual process of trying to understand where someone's coming from that helps to um, repair the relationship. Just the fact that you're willing to sit down and listen to what they have to say and really just fully listen and not, you know, not listening to respond, but just <laughs> listening to understand. Um, even if you don't agree with what they're saying, or you know, think that that mm -hmm. they're wrong. I think just just having that process of sitting down and hearing each other out, I think just that will get you a long way. And and that's not going to be the end of it. There's going to be a long road to walk from there, but it's a start. Nice. Well, Kara, thanks a lot for sharing yeah. your story. I appreciate that, and, You're and so does everybody else. So, thank you. Kara, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing your story. I invite you to think about reconciliation stories within your life, the ways that you have been forgiven by others and the people that right now you need to be able to think about forgiving and how to move forward with them. This is not easy, not saying that it is, but it is an essential part of our faith because God has loved us and loves us unconditionally and calls us to do the same with others. This is an important message to hear. We join our hearts in a word of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you do not give up on us. In this season of land, help us to practice forgiveness and reconciliation in our life, that we might restore that which has been broken. Gracious God, we pray for strength because this is not always easy. We pray for your guidance and for your, your presence, that we might create peace in our world, in our family, in our lives, in our community. Gracious God, during this season of Lent, help us to walk with Jesus to the cross, that we might be ever mindful of the sacrifice he made for us. All this and whatever else you see that we need, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.